Hey everybody, it's MMORPG.com's Way Back Wednesday. I'm your host, Rob, a.k.a. Graculin. Tonight we are playing Dark Age of Camelot. We are the Albs, also known as the silly ones that want to be English. But Anywho, uh, we are in Molvik. We are level 35 to 39, and with me tonight I have Talal. Talal's in the headset. Talal, say hi. Hello, everybody. And for those of you who forgot, Talal is the associate producer these days on Dark Age of Camelot. He works in the Ivory Tower up there in Fairfax, Virginia. Not quite ivory, but yes. <laughs> there is no sweat. Oh, the sweet glisten of my dome. Okay, yeah, I was told that, that I have a very shiny head, so if you want, I can I become self-conscious of that and I like, put cake makeup on or something. You know what, for Maybe our next segment... Hat. I'm going to get you a Dark Age of Camelot hat. I'm going to send that to you directly. Are you really? Yes. That's awesome. Right. If you got a Dark Age of Camelot beanie, that'd actually be even better. I wish. If anybody I'm out there has a Dark Age of Camelot beanie, <laughs> I will trade you a Dark Age of Camelot beanie for a Dark Age of Camelot in the bag t-shirt. Hit me up. Rob at MMORPG.com. That's my email. So, Guinness Draft, we're not on vent. I am actually still buying new gear for my Reaver, so I'm a little bit slow on the uptake tonight, sorry. But I figured I would go ahead and start the stream and get you guys in here and let you know that we hadn't forgot about you. And uh, I vote now to have Greglin wear a red clown nose next stream. <laughs> it depends on what's in it for me. <laughs> what we did it that. What do I get out of the deal? That's what I want to know. Okay, so let's see here. Let's continue to get my heroes of fun stuff. Let's see, do I want a robe? No, I don't want a robe. That would work out too well. Let's give myself chest piece. There we go. Welcome back, John. Hey! This will happen a lot tonight, I imagine. <laughs> John Thornhill, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, decided to join us for the first time in a long time. So if you hear another voice in the background that is not Talal's, that's Hi, guys. John. Hey, not Talal. Hey. hey. Oh, wait, hey. that's me. Hey, haven't been around in a while. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. How are y'all? Not too bad. So uh, I cannot complain. Yeah. We are, I think, actually still looking for some members for our group, so if you rolled out for this, if you want to send a tell to H-E-X-S-T-E-R-N and say, hey, I'm here for the Wayback Wednesday group. Have him toss you an invite. Unfortunately, I can't steer the train and do the rest at the same time. It doesn't work out so well. Uh, so, Rob, for you, I have yes. five 30-day Dark Age of Camelot game time codes. For you to give away at your discretion. Alrighty. So you heard that right here. We've got five to give away. One of those I've already earmarked for uh, people to go to this thread and leave your best Dark Age of Camelot story or you know memory. Go there, give us your best memory, and from all those, I'll just randomly pick one with a randomizer. I'll throw all your names in the hat, pick one out, and give you a 30 day. The rest will just randomly give out through the stream. But that one, will, for the people that are willing to go and do something other than show up, you get a better chance at that. So now you got to figure out which belt that I want. I want the mighty belt. So, uh, so we're in uh, Mulvick tonight, 35 to 39. Our next show will be, will be uh, Cathal Valley, 45 to 50. 45 to 49, but most people do ding 50 in there. And then our final sniff sniff show will be New Frontiers. And uh, I just want to say now that we're going to make that uh, a special show. We're going to have more things to give away. Um, I mean, kind of hoarding all the stuff. And, um, you know, we've gone through, this is the third realm, um, all the major battlegrounds plus New Frontiers. And uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do after that, Rob. I mean, are we going to say goodbye? We're never going to see each other again? Is this Is this it? No, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we'll figure something out. Okay. We'll have to make it a little uh, different. I think we'll have to spend some time in the New Frontiers, maybe put a delay on the stream by about 15, 20 minutes so people just yeah. can't know exactly what we're doing, and then actually maybe try to do some real 
some real RVR. Some real RVR. None of this, uh, none of this fake RVR that we've been doing. This. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I have uh, a bit to talk about today, um, but just to... Say it's not so. No. Not me. Me talk about things? Never. All right, first, I, uh, I got a question quick, real quick. Sure. All right, so we all just saw, or probably saw, that PlayStation 4 got announced today, and they're focusing on cloud services. And they said that they'd be able to play a lot of MMOs. Will we see Dark Age Camelot on the PlayStation 4? <laughs> no, we won't see Dark Age of Camelot on the PlayStation 4, but you will see Dark Age of Camelot. You are seeing Dark Age of Camelot on the Amazon cloud right now, as you speak. Um, as you know, as people who play regularly have noticed, um, uh, the last month you've seen a significant amount of downtime for that. We humbly apologize. We tried to make it up with some bonuses and we brought back Caledonia and there were many, many RPs made. Um, but that whole process was our migration to the Amazon cloud um, for various re reasons which I won't bore you with, but suffice it to say we are in a position now to do more with our game than we were prior to our migration. So um, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about the patch, why it was delayed, and I'll I'll give you some uh, insight into what's happening next, and I'll take those questions from you. And John will take some questions, too. All right. Well, compliments of one of our community roundtable members, Joe Provost, a.k.a. Card, he provided, and I can't forget, one of our MMORPG.com streamers, Sophie Ederbrecka, um, it's got a kind of French accent, so if I push it, Sophie, I apologize. They put together this list of questions for me to ask you tonight, and one of the first ones. What they, what Joe didn't do though, is he put the the people's names in a really light text. I could read them. Yeah, you you could if you wanted to. Sure. Um, I mean, if you want, if you want no, to prompt no, me. Okay. So apologies for the spam. That's what Joe says. But the first question, it looks like it's from Smackadope. What is your favorite part of working with Dark Age Camelot as a dev? Is it the game in general? What makes you wake up, drink some mead, and code the crap out of Dark Age Camelot? Okay, so I have first an answer from Marty, uh, because at the end, uh, the magic word was code the crap out of Camelot, and that's what Marty does. And uh, Marty's answer um, is, for me, the fun of fixing ancient bugs, which have grown more powerful with age, and improving the stability and functionality of Dayok for our diehard players. Even after working on Camelot for years, and this is this is 11 years that we're talking about for uh, for Marty, uh, it's still interesting and challenging, and you learn something new every day. Um, for me, it's uh, I mean this is this is it. This is my favorite game in the universe, and to be able to be involved with the development and you know the day to day, speaking with the players and having events like these and kind of putting myself back to where I was simply a player and waking up and realizing that I can actually have some impact on on the game and its its success and its you know its its basic maintenance. I want this game to be around and that's that's my role, that's my purpose. I love it and uh, I hope it I hope it never ends. How about you, Jan? Uh, very similar to what Talal just said. It's a game I've played for a large, large chunk of my life. Uh, my favorite game as well. Um, love it to death and, and uh, taking care of it and managing the game and coming up with new ideas for the game keeps me going every day. So. Okay. All right, this one's a balanced one, but you've seen it, and you didn't say not to ask it, so I'm going to ask you to do it. It says, can you allow Bone Dancer Suppression Pets or other pets you buff to buff on the move. They take a long time, and sometimes you can lose those pets as a result. I think that's a great idea, and I think we <laughs> can do that as well. It is a distinct possibility. There's um, there's a, a sentiment that Marty expressed to me actually today before I left the office, and um, whenever he sees these questions, he he always 
tells me to make it clear that you know there are so many people that are that are in love with this game and there's so many people with so many ideas and um, th the developmental direction of the game is in every possible way it's it's driven by our players it's the feedback that we get it's questions like these it's you know um, our speaking with the internal members guys like card and spell and Ovi and Beeb and editor um, TVR these these guys you know they are the and this is gonna actually something that I really wanted to cover tonight uh, as as intense and as invested as these guys are um, what we see is the vocal minority um, not everybody goes beyond the actual game to provide us with feedback they don't take advantage of the feedback forum on the Camelot Herald um, they don't uh, log on to post count or any other uh, fan site and um, FYI MMORPG.com does have Camelot forums by the way so if you actually use those more than welcome to but okay back to post count um, and so so what we have are the people that you know, we hear the most from this vocal minority that I'm talking about and, and as, as much as we adore these guys um, we really want to hear from th the biggest cross section of the player base possible um, and actually, it's it's my intention to basically endorse um, to endorse post count as our you know de facto unofficial official forums or official unofficial forums. Um, and I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be jumping on there and I'm going to be posting uh, because there's a lot of hearsay, a lot of um, kind of rumors, things that are lost in translation. Um, our guys, our internal guys, really do a fantastic job. But um, there's no, you know, there's no, there's no way I want anyone to have the impression that the devs are hiding behind the fact that we have no official forums. Uh, I'll take the questions and the criticism and uh, give you as clear and honest an answer as is possible. So um, I really would like to facilitate more, more people jumping onto post count and taking advantage of the information flow and um, and I'm going to be working with uh, we are going to be working with uh, some of the people that run that that forum to uh, set up some new contests and competitions and give away prizes and um, things of that nature we really want to get closer to our community it's something that you know has gone kind of up and down over the years and it's kind of our intention to to have more success in that department So, hold on one second. Sure. <laughs> uh, the problem, Rob, is uh, <laughs> linking me to the MMORPG.com Camelot forums. Um, we definitely it's, it's appreciate. Okay. It's we okay. just, you know, we, we would like to have a one-stop shop, and it's, I, it's you know, the VNs I, for the I longest time. Yeah. You know, and, and we we miss the VN boards, as you know, for for all of the we could the be fun. the VN boards, so it and just, that's it. Just needs your buy-in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on. <laughs> what types of stability developments has a mythic team in, investigating to maintain server stability? Well given recent events, I guess. Yeah. I think we kind of already just talked about that one year whole. Well, oh, there's, a tan again. there's a tangent to that. Um, and that is, you've noticed that um, we talked about certain time frames for patch 1.114, for the Mordred transfers, um, and uh, even a, a seasonal event like the, the Valentine's Day event. Uh, there was a lot that was pushed out due to this recent server maintenance. Um, it was one of those things that we absolutely couldn't do anything but give it 100% of our attention because when it comes to server stability, when it comes to, I mean, you guys were experiencing up to 10 second lag and that's absolutely unacceptable, especially with the the level of kind of crisp gameplay that, that we've all been accustomed to for, for so many years. Um, when doing something as significant as a server migration, um, you really can't cut the time budget at testing and follow-through. 
So um, our deepest apologies. You know, I, I know it's disappointing. Um, it is actually much more fun for me to be working on content and, um, you know, for, for John and I discussing class balance and moving forward with new features, it's much more fun to do that than to to work on, on in testing server stability. It's just, that's just the nature of the beast, but it's critical, it's absolutely important, and it uh, it took first priority for the last month or so. Um, so, so is there any we chance can, we could see like the Valentine's Day event happen in March? Uh, we can do something. I mean, there's a, a springtime quest that comes along um, around the middle of March. So uh, we'll take a look at the Valentine's Day quests, see what kind of rewards you know uh, players missed out on, and we'll just roll that into the next event. Uh, certain things that we did miss, like uh, during Valentine's Day, we changed the Mez animation to be hearts over your head, and that's really cute. But um, <laughs> since we're past the event, it's uh, you know we'll move into the springtime event, and the, the big killer rabbit will come back, and the Harbinger of Spring will return, and Bracelet of Springtime Folly, really big template item, really coveted, uh, that will be available again. So um, we'll we'll do something to, to beef up the rewards and uh, make up for the, the missed Valentine's Day. All right. So now on to some better news. How did it make you feel to find out that Dark Age Camelot was inducted into the MMO Hall of Fame? I want to know what took them so long, honestly. Like, really? It's after 11 years now you're inducting us? Uh, no, we absolutely are humbled by it. We love the fact that, you know... When when we uh, yeah, it takes we pro won. football hall of fame five years after you retire to get in. You guys are still uh -huh. going. Be happy. <laughs> uh, I mean, Ultima Online got in um, a few years back, and uh, we uh, we won best PvP MMO of the decade. Uh, Ten Ton Hammer gave us that accolade. Um, and whenever we, I mean, none of us take individual credit for it. You know, we everybody that's ever worked on Dark Age has has made it what it is today. Starting from you know. Marty and Rob Denton and Mark Jacobs and you know, Matt Fyror and Sonia and you know a bunch of people I can go on for an hour. All the people that had such a significant impact on the development of the game. Uh, Lori Hyrup, Colin Hicks, Scott Jennings. I mean, these are the people to whom we owe the gratitude for setting the foundation for us to build on. And, you know, Everybody deserves some of this credit, and we're super grateful. John, anything to add? No, that covered it. I was going to echo your your comments you just made about giving credit to the original makers of the game, but yeah, yeah it's very a very humbling honor. All right. There are some people out there in the community that are curious if they can actually see patch notes before they go live. If there's any way that you guys can post, you know, what you're working on in case they didn't see the monthly episode of Way Back Wednesday to hear from you guys what it is you're actually working on. So I have a I have an answer from Marty. Um, I just uh, I asked him to to weigh in on some of these uh, so we could at least get his perspective on, on some of these and what he says is we could but he thinks that getting the full list all at once is more fun. That's Marty's perspective. From my perspective, um, it's not impossible. Uh, like I said, we wanted to start working more closely with the community, and as a result of that, you know, they get to be involved in a more meaningful way in the discussions that we have to take this to drive this game into the future. So, uh, part of those discussions, you know, almost the entirety of those discussions are: what are we going to do next? How are we going to do them? What are the implications and consequences? And what are the potential benefits? Um, anybody, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to set up a, kind of a, an arrangement, an environment where anybody that wants to be involved in that process could be, if they if they wanted to. So um, we'll see how it works as we move closer to the community on the forums. And um, John, current patch notes, what, what we're working on. How do you feel about divulging that information before it's ready? Uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of of two minds. I like I like giving players 
as much um as much things as I can before they're ready. Uh, as long as we know for sure what we're going to do. But that there that being said, it's it's hard for developers to do that and and maintain viability and making sure that they can follow through because unforeseen consequences and, and blocks always, always come up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. while I understand players want for information before it's ready to be released, we just can't do it most of the time. And what we, you know, John, what John is basically saying is sometimes we catch a bit of grief for talking about something and then, you know, not delivering and it's it's just it's the nature it's the nature of the beast it's the nature of the industry it's um it's a massively multiplayer game it's all about bandwidth and resources and where those resources go everybody has their particular segment of the game their particular class their particular realm that they just they think deserves to have you know these these resources uh, applied and can't make everyone happy, although we, we, we try our best. So yeah, John's absolutely right about that. All right. The feedback form. People would like to know if they could see updates to it. Sure. <laughs> they didn't say specifically what they wanted updated about it. No, they just wanted to no. just know if they could see updates to it. Uh, I would say use the feedback form to give us some information on what you would like to see added to the feedback form. Okay, so hear that, guys. If you go to this right here and start a thread, say this is the feedback form change we want. You should do that. And I'll make sure Talal sees it, even though he said he won't go by it. <laughs> I just want to reiterate, like I do, anytime somebody mentions the feedback form, which is to say we read every single submitted form, yeah. all of them. No matter how many strings of curse words there are in them, we need them all. <laughs> might skim down a little bit more. There. Might skim down a little bit more on those, but we read every single one, so don't be shy about sending feedback in. It's like, how did monkey undies get this mad about this change? Yeah, but it's, you know, we understand. It's not like we haven't been players before. It's not like we don't we don't share some of the, the same kind of, you know, we're just human. It's all part of the process. If, you, if you're invested in something and then it doesn't go the way you want, you know, absolutely make yourself uh, make yourself heard. I actually have I've selected a few bits of feedback. Um, these are these are mostly suggestions for how we might change certain things. Uh, I'll go through those in a little bit, but we can continue with the questions. Actually, I'm going to take this opportunity right now just to remind everybody, if you're not already, make sure you're following the stream because I'm going to randomly give away a game time card. In order for me to do that, you actually have to be following the stream. So let's get like five seconds. There's a little follow button above me. All right, now let's click it. Uh, in chat, Your Majesty has asked about the re-enlistment campaign. Ah, it's going to get there. Oh, okay, sorry. Do you want to go ahead and I ask? I promise you. I promise. <laughs> DAOC Gamer, you're following MMORPC.com and you won the 30 day game time. So, write your name down. And I will email that to you through Twitch uh, by the end of the week. Okay. He doesn't need. He doesn't need. Day Out Gamer doesn't need. Well, you can apply that game time code to your current account, and you'll just get a free month. But if you... If you want me to re-gift it, I can. No, it's okay. Okay. I'll roll again, then. I was going to say start a third account, but, you know, that's cool, too. Oh, U-L-P-H, <laughs> you won, but it says you're not following, so got to roll again. Shizza, S-C-H-E-Z-Z-A, you won. There you go. Congrats, Shizza. Congrats, unless you want to re-gift it. All right, let's uh, carry on. Going. Where's Hex? Where did, I don't know, where's Hex? <laughs> okay, since 
it was one of the questions I was going to get to here really quickly, anyways. But since somebody else did talk about it, we'll we'll jump ahead. Uh, the reenlistment campaign. You guys were going to do some upgrades to the reenlistment campaign and bring it back. So far, you know, with the server instability, I guess kind of push that timetable out. We yeah. have not seen that yet. Yeah, it's going to go uh, patch, mortar transfers, reenlistment campaign. Oh, you just answered like three questions, not one. Yep. Okay. Patch, mortar transfers, mm -hmm. reenlistment campaign. Yes, sir. How close are we to seeing the patch? Uh, we are going to Pendragon tomorrow. Uh, you guys will have patch notes in the morning. Okay. And uh, we really want to. Uh, to ask everyone to jump on a Pendragon, even, even if, it's for, if it's for just a few minutes at a time, jump on a Pendragon and test some of the changes. Um, uh, if you log on to the, the Herald, or you can see it on the Patcher, um, it's actually going to be tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we're taking down Pendragon tomorrow morning, and the, the deployment process takes a little bit of time, but uh, when it comes back up, uh, you'll have the patch notes before the servers go down, and you'll be able to test it. Um, we're probably looking at a uh, going down at 2 p.m. and coming back up at uh, 6 or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's 1.114, and uh, mortar transfers. Uh, part of part of the mortar transfers. Uh, involves uh, kind of essential bits of the patch, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. We, we need to patch before we can uh, initiate the mortar transfers. So, and just, just because of our schedule, you know, we promised our players first that we'd get the patch taken care of. Uh, as we said before, the server maintenance kind of pushed that out a little bit. Um, but we shouldn't see. I guess we, we gave kind of a mid February time frame for the mortar transfers, and the patch kind of pushed everything out, or rather, the uh, the maintenance pushed everything out by two or three weeks. So um, I'd say about two or three weeks, you know, there thereabouts uh, after 1.114 goes live, uh, we'll be looking at mortar transfers. And like I said, we're going to Pendragon tomorrow. battling going on here um, okay so after a, a, so what do you think of like a time from, frame like two to three months in maybe before we see the no, uh, reenlistment no, campaign oh uh, for the reenlistment campaign yeah mm -hmm. I would say that's that's a, a solid time frame okay so about two to three months we're looking at before the reenlistment campaign any ideas or concepts for what you're going to do to make it better than the uh, previous one uh, we're kicking around a few ideas, not really ready to comment on them yet. Um, there's certain, you know, we're discussing certain liability issues as to, you know, the approach that we're going to take on on the ideas that we have. So uh, once they're a bit more incubated, we'll talk to you guys about them, maybe during our next stream. And okay. uh, we'll see how you feel about it, take your feedback on it, and uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to... Uh Hit by mids on one side and hips on the other. Mids on the top of the hill, hips coming from the bottom of the hill. Let's see, is everybody dead? I don't think so. Just me. Just you. Oh, great. So what's new? All right, let's see where we stop off at. Oh, this one's from our friend Tom Spiller, a.k.a. Ekao. I think that's how he says it. Ekao. Ekao. He's English, but I say it with like a an Eastern Asian accent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> New user journey channelers currently can't be used by level 50 players. Like the battleground channelers, they should offer options to at least teleport to the capital city, primary border keep, and your personal house. What are your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts are that that's a bug and we'll fix it. Okay. There you go, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Quit your whining. Oh, hey, can I jump in about a lot of the questions on the stream I'm seeing about class balance and discussions and sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. by all means. So we have an internal forum. I generally like to talk to them there about class balance ideas and run them by them. I don't like to speculate 
and throw out my ideas that are not fully incubated to the general player base for various reasons, mostly because you guys will yell at me. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we don't like answering them on the stream, in short. There you go. Because they don't want to piss you off more in the long run. Sure, it's, you know, we could, if we as, did. As far as, I've seen people say they could write a bunch of feedback about, about classes and all that sort of stuff. Keep writing it, we'll keep reading it, and we'll keep into, uh, iterating on it. And if we did, uh, this will this would be three four hours of a class balance discussion. Like it would it would never end. Yes, and uh, apparently warlocks have been incubated. That's what you're saying. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, we've got some solid ideas for yeah for all the things to all the classes that we mentioned before. You know the reavers, the maulers, the warlocks. Uh, uh, there are several ideas that we're we're kicking around and. Uh, you know that, that's that's one of the things that we prefer to keep close to our chests until um, until it's time to implement. And and just to follow up on the feedback thing, the the more valuable feedback we get from people, and if it's consistent valuable feedback, we generally try to add them to the internal forums. Yep. So if that's something that you want to be a part of, and you want to be a part of the class balance discussion, continue sending in that feedback. Continue being civil about it and being uh, rational and... Constructive. <clears throat> constructive, and we'll, we'll add you to the internal forums, most likely. That's, that's the basis on which uh, almost all of our internal forum members were selected, was the fact that they just consistently gave us fantastic feedback. So, John's... John's right on the nose about that. All right. Let's see. Card wants to know how those puppies and pouches are coming along. Um, so we talked about this before, uh, making uh, slash quiver, uh, opening those slots up to other items, particularly poisons. Um, I talked to Marty about this. We we went over in in, in extensive detail um, the many ways we might be able to pull this off, but the final verdict was it's not possible at this, this time. However, that being said, there is something coming in the next patch which will more than make up for that. So, um, you'll, uh, you'll see that it's actually not, it's, a, it's not too much of a departure from, from that whole concept, so I think everyone will be quite pleased with it. But the, the final verdict, again, on the poison pouch is that it's, it's just not feasible at this time. And uh, Tom's next question, I just want to, because I love Marty's answer on this. Um, when in secure areas, can we log out instantly instead of waiting for a timer, such as in a house or a capital city? And Marty's answer is yes. Sure. Yeah, I think Tom asked that. Oh, yeah. Tom's. Yep. Hey, uh, question real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that there used to be official merchandise that you could get through the Bioware store. Uh -huh. Now that you guys aren't really, you know, affiliated with Bioware so much, is there a place where people can get official merchandise for Dark Age of Camelot off the Mythic uh, store, maybe? Not at the moment, but, um, you know, that's that's one of those things. Can we make bootlegs? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you can, you know, side of the road stand. Uh, there's, you could still get the uh, 10th anniversary lithograph. Um, and there's, actually, there's... The Bioware store still uh, sells a few uh, t-shirts, but it's by no means as extensive as it used to be. Um, and it is, you know, the Bioware store. There's a, a mythic section to it, and you can buy some Ultima Online stuff. There's t-shirts from the Three Realms, a lithograph, and a, uh, a ladies version of the Dark Age of Camelot 10th Anniversary t-shirt. There you go. There's a girl close. Uh, let's see. So the full Mythic store is unfortunately no longer available. So he's not encouraging you to boot like stuff. No. Right. Could the Midgard no, no. ever see improvements to their throwing weapons or Hibernia's short bow or Albion's crossbow? That's, uh, so that's I, a, can, yeah, I can answer that uh, pretty uh, 
I guess. Briefly. What's the word? But briefly, yeah, I guess. S- um, succinctly. Nope. Succinctly, which is what I'm not doing right now. Anyway, <laughs> the answer is probably not, because the way that the balance works between the three realms, those are fairly unused. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe in the foreseeable future, but most likely no. I think the response to that would be, well, it's not used because it's not powerful enough. If you made it more powerful, then maybe it would get used more often. Um, again, it's, it's just feedback. You know, if if we heard an overwhelming cry to, to have these, you know, the short bow, the crossbow, throwing axe, if we, if the overwhelming cry was to have these these weapons upgraded, then you, know, you right. guys drive the game, and we would definitely take a look. But I don't I don't think I've ever seen any feedback in that regard, at least not recently. I think it's the first time I've heard of this in in years. I think there's more exciting ways to add to those classes than effectively buffing their pulling mechanic for PPE. Sir, I'm trying to fill up my group. Uh, When will legendary weapons get upgraded? Uh, We talked about this last time. Uh, We're looking at 1.115 for that. Also, to respond to the uh, part about adding charges to throwing weapons and short bows, I guess. Uh, probably not going to be adding it to throwing weapons, although I think you can add them to short bows, which, yeah, I guess it is a little bit unfair. Um, so yeah, maybe we could do that. Alright, since we're here at the uh, keep, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and toss out another key. And it's going to... Okay, that person can't have it because they already won once. <laughs> Let's see. Let, let me uh, make sure I update the list so anybody that's followed. I'm making suspicious face at your random person generator. You make suspicious face. Well, then she's it again. I'm like, oh, I don't think that could work out so well. You already won once. It's not really fair. All right. <clears throat> Roll the dice. Really? I can't believe there's people at this point that aren't following. I'm just not going to say their names, so I don't want them to feel bad. <laughs> there's two in a row. Oh, there we go. Third time's a charm. Raycos 101. Congratulations, sir. Yes. R-A-K-O-S 101. You won, and I will email it to you whenever Talal sends them to me. Okay. Uh, if, if you've uh, asked a question in chat and we just kind of rolled right over it, uh, please, by all means, ask it again. Um, Yes, we've actually got a couple more two here. Um, some people are upset about bridge camping, and then I guess I want to know your thoughts on bridge camping and what conclusions, if any, you guys have come to about it. Well, I mean, it's an inherent part of the game. I like because it because it's it's a function of the environment, right? I mean, it's it's the way that people and we've had extensive discussions about this. We talked about it last time, you know. Um, what the first Caledonia event did was it kind of threw into sharp relief the the, the difference in in playstyles when you have that instant accessible action, and I think that um, I think that the the camping of bridges is is basically players' best attempt to kind of allocate a specific area where they know that they can find a fight as quickly as possible. Um, especially during lower population hours. Um, the, the the frontiers are, are big, right? It's a lot of real estate. And, um, you know, we understand that if you are traversing the frontiers and you're crossing a bridge and you get, you know, holy crap, zerged by a bunch of stealthers or, you know, people just kind of camping that bridge, you know, I think that's telling you that what, that their their objective has been 
has been completed. You know, they are there because they know that's where people are going to. They're going to find a fight. That's, and so we've uh, we've talked about it recently. We've had extensive discussions our internal firms, and I think, you know, John can can outline what you know direction we want to go with this. Anytime he wants. No. John? Uh, I can. I can outline <laughs> that if you really want me to go into it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, th- this is this is the you know the no BS segment, right? We're not we're not here to this. We all feel strongly about this. We're all players. We we know what the issues are. Let's talk about them. Well, yeah, sure. But like my solution to it is, in my head, ideally we would try to remap the terrain to make it better to make it less about camping bridges and more about other types of choke points that are more conducive to free-flowing RVR, open field RVR, um, as well as um, making a more a more defensible and staged defense of the realm. Uh, but that's a whole other discussion. I don't know if we want to get involved with that tonight. Sure. I mean, we can't really go into ridiculous detail, but, you know, we've talked about, you know, we are still talking about you know what? What John said. We're we're talking about making fundamental changes consistent with the bandwidth and resources that we have to do so in the frontiers, so mm. players don't have to rely on you know waiting mm. for you know Capital Valley to open the fifties or waiting for Caledonia to come back because you know this this last time gave us some insight into the the detriments of having such quick RVR and you know it's you know on the one hand we get some 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 feedback and you know complaints that it's not easy to find a fight in the frontiers and then we get feedbacks and complaints that it's it's just too much in Caledonia like there's just no chance to get from you know outside of your portal keep to the central keep because you just get you know just crazy zerked every time but you know the the solution is is the happy medium, right? It's something that's larger than Caledonia, but smaller than NF, at least in its you know practical um, implementation. Fighting space. use hmm? usable space. Yeah. Okay, I kind of cut you off on this one earlier because uh, you're going to start talking about it. If I gave away a time card, you were going to talk about the heroic How dare armor you be nice to our players and some of the quests. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Did you want to go ahead and start talking about that? About the what now? Sorry. Uh, I think you were getting ready to talk about epic quest lines, maybe, and possibly some heroic armor and good stuff like that. Uh, we talked about that. that before. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's perfectly fine. You're going to get much more insight into this tomorrow when you read the patch notes. But uh, what we talked about before you was now? yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> we talked about uh, upgrading epic armor. Uh, this will be this is third generation epic armor. Um, it looks the same. And that's no bad thing because I think the epic arm- armor, for the most part, um, is beautiful. Uh, but the stats have been updated. We've added epic accessories. Um, traditionally, you would you would start questing at level five, and the, the epic line would take you, you know, all the way up to to 45, and you would start getting rewards, you know, for you know level five, 10, 20. You know, and those are the accessories that you got, and they're just they just weren't practical. You couldn't hold on to those, especially as you moved to the higher level. So what we've done is um, we've added those accessories uh, mm-hmm. and weapons, uh, basically, you know, epic weapons that can't shouldn't be confused with champion weapons because they're still in the game, they're still viable, and done our best to put together a perfectly reasonable RVR viable template for players that may not have access to um, to anything decent in terms of a template or returning players whose templates are outmoded. Uh, if you meet a certain champion level requirement, you just you get this this armor. Um, I'm going to make you stay tuned for how. Uh, there's nothing crazy about it, but I'm just not going to go into the whole process so um, but that's as much of an insight we've we've uh, upgraded epics to be 
easier to obtain. Uh, and just to reiterate his point, they are a template, so the epic weapons we're making aren't necessarily on the same level as champion weapons by themselves. They don't look like champion weapons. Um, they are glowy, like the old school glowies, um, but they aren't meant to be replacements for the champion weapons. They're meant to be suitable, usable weapons to get and use before you get the champion weapons and to use in tandem with the epic armor and accessories we're making. Yep. And we talked about some of the stats, you know, plus 90 to, to the stats, uh, cap resists, you know, halfway to three quarters up your toas. Uh, that sounded dirty. Um, and uh, what am I missing? Uh, some, you know, some procs and some, uh, it's just, you know, a decent, perfectly viable RVR template if you don't have, if you haven't, you know, put together. It's, it's a bit of a problem, especially for more casual players. Um, some of those template items for the high-end templates are difficult to achieve, they're, they're time-consuming, or they're prohibitively expensive. Yeah, and so our goal with them is to really get a new player that plays through the new user journey, plays through the battlegrounds on their first character, gets a CL10. By the time they're CL10, they'll have a suit of armor and weapon that they can go out and RBR with and not get utterly steamrolled. So um, Aurelio as has... As best as we can. Yeah. So we're talking about some stat caps, some TOA bonuses, but not completely capped out, but pretty close to it. Don't go the way of crap MMOs to cater to casuals. That's what Aurelio is saying. Um, yeah, because yeah, when you're saying that, I go, well, you're like, easier epics. I go, welfare epics. But, you know, no, no, no. They're, uh, you know the, the, the crafted and the people who spend time meticulously put together the best possible templates in the game, I mean, these aren't going to compare to those. You know, players will always have the ability to put together kind of this, you know, Frankenstein, you know, and yes, and you know, there's a follow-up question to that. Will they be viable for using an actual template? Sure, that's 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 completely up to the individual. You know how you, if if these happen to meet certain requirements, and you can build a template around them. Um, you know, yeah, I, I think they're. You know, not every piece is spectacular. We're not talking about, you know, infernal sleeves quality, but they're nothing to kind of turn your nose up at. So. Sure, they're 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 viable to use in templates. You can, you know, some people might find that they happen to get specifically the item that they've been waiting for to fill out this template that they had a hole in. So, yeah, they're not welfare epics. I mean, you know, we can say, would it be fair to say, John, they're better than the second generation epics? I mean, that's what we were going oh. for, right? Yeah, they're way better than those. Yeah, so. So uh, any I'd say overall, they're better than Dragon Slayer yeah. uh, armor as well. Okay, so I guess in the same vein of, well, not the exact same vein, but since you're updating weapons and armor, do you think there's any chance you're going to do any more updates or changes to the relics? Uh, tough one. No, you know we gave the relics some love last year, mm -hmm. and um, unless we we get some feedback that it's untenable out there. Um, I have I have noticed, to be perfectly honest, that there is much, there's a much smaller rate of relic activity. Uh, that's not that's not what we were going for. Um, one of the the pillars of our our decision to change the relic game was that it was just it was far too simple to take a relic uh, before, and that's that's not the way that we wanted it. Um, if the changes have resulted in it being far too difficult to to take or to maintain ownership of a relic, then that's the kind of stuff we really need to know about because um, the relic game is it's integral to the to RVR. It's, it's part of the um, the foundation of this game. And it has to be respected. And if it's not working, it has to be changed. So, so while we have no plans, we haven't really heard any feedback one way or the other. Um, so we'd, we'd love to hear it if it's, if it's not working out or if it's just fine. We'd love to hear that too. Okay, that was actually a question that I kept getting tells about. Um, any ideas about celerity? Charge I think duration you mean increase. 
Yeah. Um, ten minutes, perhaps. So this has been a hot topic on the internal forums for a while. Uh, kind of something we could go either way on. On the one hand, I see players that use celerity potions, which are very powerful, um, as cumbersome. They're cumbersome to use their five-minute duration with a three-minute recast, so it's hard to get them up for forever. At the same time, they are very powerful, and they take away and detract from uh, distinct class abilities, and so part of me just wants to remove them from the game entirely and not let anybody use them at all, <laughs> which I think might be harsh. So there's it's about harsh. finding that. It's about finding that middle ground, and we're not really ready to to build on that from there. But we are looking at it. Oh, and just uh, I think this is more of feedback than a question, uh, and I believe this is from Old Etau. Currently, there's a sweet spot in the New Frontiers that players can shoot catapults at the safe water keeps. Have you noticed that? And if so, are there any chances that those will be changed so the safe areas are safe? Uh, we had a saying um, that our CS department, you know, used over the years: that there are, there are no safe areas in the New Frontiers. Um, the border keeps aren't. They weren't necessarily designed. They basically became de facto safe. You know, it just evolved in that way. There are okay. term guards that you know exist along the the border keep um, in the border keep areas where if you come up to a certain range, you will just get you know destroyed. You'll take you know four thousand damage from from one one of these one of these guards. Um, but that's not to say that the the areas there are specifically designed to be, you know, impervious to all damage. Um, but if it's you know, if it's something that everyone feels really strongly about, we can look at the possibility of, you know, if it involves an exploit. That's that's another thing. You know, if if these people are setting up the um, the siege weapons in an area that is not designed as a player pathway, then there's absolutely we can something do, do something about that. Or rather, there's something we can do about that. It's it's all a matter of whether or not these players are using strategy or if they are violating the terms of service. And uh, you know, we have I have seen reports on it, but um, we haven't actually received you know coordinate information. So. If anyone wants to supply those locs for us, um, we'll take a look. All right, so I'll tell Tom to uh, quit pitching and provide coordinates. All right, any chance that more spells could be added to the coexist code? What this again is is actually they're hinting at changes to celerity. I should have read that one all the way through. Uh, are they asking if we can run... It, it's basically any chance more spells can be added to the coexist code, such as celerity changes coexisting with celerity chance. I mean, that might be char is that charges? No, just, yeah, charges. Good yeah, there's a possibility. We can look at that as a possible solution. It's, it's on the table. Okay. Um, UI question. Some windows don't have save location, such as the release window. Can you guys make it remember it's a location, please? Yeah, we can take a look at that. There we go. Simple one. That was from Card, by the way, so we okay. can slap Joe around for that. I just thank you, him. Card. I don't know why you couldn't just ask me personally, but thank you. He wanted to call you out on the stream. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. He really, um, he really is getting pissed off about that release window. Yeah. And this is uh, the time that I take to do the obligatory. Um, it's not. It's, it's Everything's possible. We, we, we thank all of our internal forum members uh, for being so active and so dedicated and so invested in the game. Um, you know, they're the ones that have spent the time to assemble all of these questions um, and they work with us daily to make this a better game. And um, so to our player base and, you know, especially our internal forum members, I wish I could name every single one of them. Um, but uh, we absolutely, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you and appreciate you. And again, I've seen some people ask about how they get on the internal forums, keep submitting in feedback, keep sending many in construction feedback, and we will hopefully eventually add you. Yep. 
so we added uh, and, and, and make it make it known you know it was uh it was uh i think after the first stream or so that uh that you know a few people that we've added to the internal forums uh just once they realize that we do read the feedback they they kept on submitting it and um it just it went from there so yeah listen to john take his advice for those that are wondering, I'm not one of them, so don't ask me. No. I don't He's know. like, oh god, those guys from Camelot again. When will this be over? Uh, respond to your emails more frequently. Stupid <laughs> <laughs> show. All right. Um, here's a good one. And this is from Card. What kinds of things are you working on to help streamline the process from Rob Noob to Pro? From from, oh, from, from new, new players pro. to pro from players. To oh. pro. Yeah. For this patch, it's really the, the epic stuff we're doing is kind of the, the piece on this patch specifically that we're focusing on. It's more about um, getting them ready to RBR at 50. We, we kind of did that with the user journey up to maybe 35, maybe through Molvik, Molvik if you want to be generous. But this is kind of a way to, to bridge the gap from there to, to 50 and, and RBR. Real uh, RBRs, I would say. We also want to incentivize guild participation, and to that end, uh, check out the patch notes tomorrow for how we've improved guild merit bonuses. Um, directly from feedback, that change. Okay. I'm going to give away a third key now, since we're back here at the uh, keep. Let's see what we get. Roll the dice. Again, not following. Liquid Bible. Liquid Bible. It's a very interesting name. L I Q U I D. We don't judge. Bible. All right, check your email, friends. It'll be coming to you soon. Oh, look at him. Hey, he's congratulations. Even a, he's even a Twitch Turbo user, or she. Ooh. Playing the pronoun game now. It. Congratulations, Liquid Bible. You should be receiving your 30-day Dark Age of Camelot game time card shortly. Probably after the stream. Alright, so uh, with the picked event over, what comes next? Any teasers? Um, there is a... I want to also... And this will move into the point, to the question... Um, Part of our group today, we have uh, Kai Schober and uh, his wife, Jenny. Um, we want to extend a, a special welcome and thank you to those guys. You know, talked about Kai, will always be family, will always be a part of Dark Age of Camelot, no matter where he is in the world or what he's doing. Um, and one of the things that Kai has done is he has brought over a, a stable of live events that they used to run on the European servers. Um, some of them created by him personally. Uh, they're fantastic events. Um, there has to be a little bit of work, uh, mostly kind of translation, localization work that needs to be done um, in order to make them viable on a North American server. Uh, but as a general uh, event, I think they're, they're really great. They're really... Uh, they are going to be well received by everybody is my is my guess my anticipation um, so that's the kind of stuff that we can look forward to um, like I said in the beginning of the stream we have a, a, a schedule of you know patch order transfer um, reenlistment campaign and then uh, throughout the entirety of that process you're going to get um, the seasonal events and you know once more our apologies for uh, Valentine's Day um, for those that have joined us since I spoke about it at the beginning, um, a lot of the things that we talked about in the previous streams that were set to go live around this time frame were pushed back by our, and so we apologize for that, and um, it's our intention to get all this stuff to you as quickly and as effectively as possible. So, we're sorry. Alrighty. 
let's see. Journal management. Can we see additional options to journal management, such as the ability to remove all quests? Uh, that's something we can look into. Uh, I wouldn't be prepared to slate it for a particular time frame or a particular patch just yet. Um, it, the, the UI is uh, its a bit of a tricky subject. Um, there's a lot more there than you would assume. Um, so again, this comes back to bandwidth and resources and where, you know, where we're focusing those resources. We want to have the most um, certainty that where we are focusing those resources are in you know in in line with what the players want for us and again that's that's all about the feedback and um, and again at the beginning I mentioned us really wanting to reach out and do more hands-on community stuff I mentioned uh, our intention to start uh, talking to some of the folks some of the, the uh, the posters on post count and uh, just kind of mo moving into and the MMORPG.com forums <laughs> 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 and it's uh, yeah so we want to really open up the uh, the lines of communication between us and you know beyond the vocal minority All right, I think we just call it Bob. Say Bob, we're the UI. <laughs> um, this is a kind of a UI thing, I guess. Creation of new alliances. Oh, actually, it's a little bit more than that. The alliance process seems obscure to the average player. Perhaps you could add a training quest that would explain alliances in better detail. Um, yeah, you know, that's, again, it's not as simple as um, spending a day and... It, arbitrarily inserting a a brand new UI feature it does take you know time investigation testing um, and you know we generally run those things past Marty he gives us because uh, he's the, the coding guru he gives us his uh, his assessment and you know he's a straight shooter he'll say to be honest risk versus reward return on investment is just not worth it um, there's a lot of things that we would love to see in the game that, unfortunately, you know, we mentioned something before the the poison pouch. You know, I thought I think it's a, a hell of a clever idea. I think it's great. Um, it's just not feasible, and sometimes that's just the way it goes. It's heartbreaking for us too. You guys should understand that. But um, we'll see what the future brings. Uh, but for right now, you know, we're going to take UI feedback. Um, we're gonna basically have that caveat with with UI feedback. It's you know, it's one of the things that we understand to be one of the primary um, obstructions to new players coming in is they just can't handle uh, our our UI. They think it's really old, it's dated, and they're asking what the hell we think we're doing by making them actually type things and slash commands. Uh, that's that's so 2001, right? Um, yeah, I know we we've, we've read that feedback. We've and you know, we've put that out ourselves. And ha had we the resources and the bandwidth, it's one of the first things that I personally would change. And I think John feels the same way. I think Marty feels the same way. We gotta choose our battles, friends. Okay, so there are people saying that they've heard rumors of changes to the new frontiers and. 1.114. Anything you want to hint at? Uh, 1.114 isn't isn't as big as just the first um, the first release, the first implementation. You know, we've we've talked to the, we've actually had trivia questions in the past. You know, how many total patches were there, and how many mm -hmm. sub patches, how many lettered patches? You know, with a you know attached to a numbered patch. Um, I, for one, you know, I would like to do more with 1.114. Uh, things that I really just don't want to have to wait for 1.115. So, uh, it's, it's a distinct possibility that something 
uh, like a new approach to the new frontiers could be considered for a later stage of 1.114. But I can't give you a time frame on that, unfortunately, right now. We have to gather, you know, the, the priorities that you guys have given us and execute on those first. Would you consider unlocking the range slot for a second two-handed weapon? <laughs> uh, no. Not right now. Okay. And then, adding a quest for taking the CK and BGs, other than the one that offers RP and BP, maybe one that offers, uh, I'm sorry, one that offers RP and BP instead of XP really have to be careful how much PvE we introduce into into RVR. Um, there is absolutely an appropriate element of using PvE to conduce RVR. Um, and I guess that goes, that's fairly in line with, you know, his question, uh, their question. Uh, there's also, I can, I can pretty much tell you straight up that, um, we won't offer realm points as a quest reward. Uh, you already get a, a specific amount of realm points and bounty points for keep capture as it is. Um, but there's this code in there which makes the the value of your reward a function of your participation um, in the event, in the actual keep capture event. So um, I don't think that we would put, you know, Bounty points, different story, but realm points, they're, the, the sanctity of realm points really can't be violated by um, by integrating too much of a PvE element in there. You get realm points for killing other players. Um, there's no... Um, and we, we love all of our servers, we love all of our rule sets, but if PvEing your way to realm rank 13 sounds like a good idea, then by all means, jump on Gaharis. I've got characters on, I've got several 50s on Gaharis, the kind of templates you can put together there and, you know, it's it's a fun environment, but when you're in the New Frontiers on Owain, you're there to kill the enemy realm. That's how you run your RPs. That's just my perspective. You're kind of the AP, so... Well, you know... <laughs> I have a I have a philosophy on this game. John has a philosophy on this game. You know, everyone that's ever worked on it has a specific philosophy on this game. I consider myself kind of a purist. Um, so, how do you view yourself? Do you see yourself kind of as the steward at this point for Dark Age Camelot, and not necessarily the uh, chief? No, I mean, John and I make all the decisions. Uh, you know, John, Marty, and I, and you know, there's mm -hmm. other other people involved. But you know, the reason why you talk to us is because um, we're responsible for the developmental direction of this game. And um, if you're asking if the buck stops with me, then you know, it's one way to say it. But that's not how I look at it. Um, I consider myself a, a, a servant to the players. It doesn't sound hokey, but it's it's true. You know, we we would never take this game and develop it for our own playstyles. Um, I've seen developers do that in, you know, with other products uh, in other studios in the past. It just, it doesn't work. Um, you have to listen to your players. You have to, uh, I mean, you're working for them. It's a, it's a public service, really. Again, I hope that doesn't sound hokey, but I swear to God it's true. Okay. This is going to be the last question I got on the sheets, and this is from Joshua somebody else. I can't read your last name, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we ever expect epic mob loot drops to be combined with Draco to make them actually worthy of investing time to kill? Um, we talked about mixing up 
loot tables on high end encounters, and you know we're we're kicking around the best possible way to implement that strategy. So um, it could be as simple as hey, now most of these epic encounters drop loot from other epic encounters, um, or we could get a bit more creative with it. Um, it's uh, it's all a matter of, you know, are people camping Draco? Is it impossible to get in there? You know, there was a there was a significant problem at one time where people who needed, you know, ML10 gear, astral gear, couldn't get it because their ML10 encounter was perpetually camped. Um, so we kind of we pulled the trigger on some some solutions to that. Um, if it's still happening, you know, we haven't really heard anything about it. So we just assume, you know, at least for, for my part, um, I've always been able to take part in an ML10 raid. It's been available to me, so as a player, I don't see it happening. Um, but I think it's, it's specific to Realm, it's specific to the time of day that you're playing. Um, so yeah, it's 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 under consideration. We're we're kicking around the ideas, but again, we we tend to react more quickly if there are critical problems and not just um, clever features that we could potentially introduce. Okay, for those of you guys that are still here playing Albion, we could use one more person. Need a little bit of a. I think we could use a healer. We've got one. Maybe two would be nice. And uh, I think we can make like one more sweep around and see if we can get some kills. That last one was actually pretty good, which is one of the reasons I kind of got distracted there because we were uh, we were doing some rolling, and then they came just zerging uh, out of that keep, and it was not good for us. Max, we, we were at eight. We just lost one. The guy, Guinness, had some personal issues he had to attend to. Oh, dear. I uh, hope they're not serious. No, you didn't read chat, apparently. <laughs> uh, the rest of the stream probably did read chat. While we got this downtime real quick, for those of you guys that haven't been lucky enough to... Go ahead. Nothing important. Yeah, for those of you guys that have... Um, not won anything. I'm going to have... I'm trying to find the actual link. We have two time cards left to give yeah, away. Yeah, and I got one earmarked away already, so... Um, we got one more, unless you want to give... Yeah, let's add an extra two into the mix. Extra two? So you want me to give away four more, then? Uh, well, you have the one earmark, so we're giving away three more three on the stream. Okay. So let's see here. Real quick, let's give one away. Ryo Wolf. Ryo Wolf, congratulations. Do you want yours, Ryo? Yeah, that that first. Or are you just hanging out? No, he he. I think he actually won one in the past. He didn't take it. He just likes to hang out on all my streams. Oh, okay, well, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Ryo Wolf. I'll write Make it down, Ryo. You let me know. If not, I'll re-gift it to somebody. Make yourself known. No, oh, he wants it. Okay, Ryo got it, and we'll roll again. Congratulations. And Hazy, H-A-Y-Z-I. Okay. And one last one. I see Sophie there in the stream. Hey, Sophie. And let's actually save one last one for right before we take off. Sure. Um, let's see. What I was trying to link, though, is I had a, uh, the last write-up, I asked people to put down their favorite memory of Dark Age of Camelot, and from all the people that wrote down what their favorite memory was, you didn't, it'd be nice if you put some effort into it, but you didn't have to, just basically if it's a participation thing, if you left a comment with what your favorite memory from Dark Age of Camelot was, I'd throw your name in a hat and I'll just randomly draw from it. So, if you can, follow that link, and write down what your favorite memory of Dark Age Camelot was, I will do that drawing on Friday. 
So you guys have a few days. And uh, yeah, there you go. So we filled our group back up. And Kai, if you want to get us rolling, 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 let's go. I really did just do that. It's way back <laughs> Wednesday, guys. So 1990s new metal. Quotes, Anything goes. Right? Yeah. Thanks, Dave. If anybody noticed, my shirt is actually it's Mario on the top side of the tunnel saying thanks to Raphael on the bottom side of the tunnel in the sewers who killed the uh, piranha plant. I just got it in the mail today. So what's new? Is there anything new at Mythic you can talk about, Falal? New at Mythic? I mean, you were at a, what was it, New York Comic Con last week? No, no, it was uh, no. an EA press event. An um, EA press event. Yeah. In, but you did uh, talk about New York. something. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a part of a um, kind of a... Extended family? And it, yeah, I mean, it's it was a bunch of us that went up there to represent uh, Mythic... Uh, particularly for Ultima Forever, which is uh, which has been announced um, officially, and the the trailer and the previews have have come out, um, and it was basically surrounding that. Uh, I believe you have a question for me though, around something that happened last week. Somebody you spoke with last week. Oh, I wasn't going to ask you that on this. Oh, it's perfectly fine. Um, we had actually we've had a bunch of questions, and they've come from all angles. Okay. They've come from the internal forums. They've come all from right. the appeal queue. You know, from our customer support appeal queue. So they've come from feedback. We kept we kind of kept this for the end because we didn't want the entire show to just totally break down and degenerate into a Mark Jacobs Camelot Unchained uh, conversation. That being said, since we've only got about ten minutes left, anyways. Uh, I asked Talal what his thoughts on the whole uh, project that Mark's got going on down the street from them with uh, City State Entertainment. And uh, the answer is, is really simple. You know, Mark was part of creating my favorite game in the universe. I have nothing but respect for the guy. And, um, you know, without him, you know, at least in part, there would be no Dark Age of Camelot. And so for that, he gets, you know... He gets all of his his credit and his his, his due respect, um, and we wish him nothing but the very best. And uh, thanks for the free press. <laughs> nothing, nothing like some, you know, no, no such thing as bad publicity, right? Exactly. So uh, he definitely hasn't said anything bad about. Him. Well, of course. I mean, I think that you know I'm hazarding a guess here, but I think that there's still a great deal of love in his heart for Dark Age of Camelot. So. You know, it's it's his baby as much as it is, you know, anyone else that was part of that in, initial launch crew. And, you know, it's he was, you know, lead designer on the project. So I know how much it must mean to him. And like, like I said, you know, we wish him the, the very best. Mark's a great guy, so. And he's looking for $2 million. So if you've uh, got like 10 to 50 bucks you want to throw in his Kickstarter, <laughs> you should see that in March. And you know, people are people are asking, and it's you know that's as straightforward an answer as I can possibly give. And you know, I won't get into any more detail than that, but that's that covers it, I think. That's good. I just know some people have some very strong opinions about MJ, and I've had nothing but good encounters with the guy. So I sure, make sure, I mean, that didn't turn into no, no. We of had 130 not. people in the chat room. Rawr, MJ, you killed my love. I think we are. That all happens, guys. <laughs> We're all gentlemen, gentlewomen. We're all very sophisticated, and we would never sink to that level. You're being asked to push and heal. I, I tried. It didn't work out so well. Let's see real quickly here. For anybody that is actually... Let's see... If anybody's interested in what 
Tlaw and I were just talking about, in case you haven't heard, I got about an hour long interview with Mark there and I just linked it. You can watch it. It's a good chat. He actually has some interesting things to say. We did get split up, but then I found the group. Someone was right. I was spinning around. I found my group. Found my group. Got back up there. And then I died. Alright, I think we're, uh... I think we're going to go on our final loop. Are you going to die to the guards? No, I think we're going to... Well, I think we're going to go try and kill some people first. Sure. I don't think we've killed enough people. Oh, for those who are asking, the next way back Wednesday... Normally we do the second Wednesday of the week. The EA had that little announcement dealie that they were doing last week. So that's why it didn't happen in February. So you should see... Um, March... Exactly. Uh, Fourteenth. Let's see. Was it March thirteenth? Yes, March same 13th. dates. That's right, because February is a four-week month, so it's gonna be the same days. So it should be March thirteenth. Yeah, and uh, I guess we will have we'll it be in uh, a, a week sooner because we had it a week later this time. Yeah, so, so it'll only be like three weeks. So yeah, it'll be good because we'll uh, we'll have a chance to talk about the the recent patch, and you'll get updates on everything we've talked about. Um, Second Wednesday of the month. Come on, people. Yeah. Follow along here. No 30 day time card for you. <laughs> Will they have a patch before then? I think yes. that we're going to. That's why we're going to have fun stuff to talk about next time. All right. And since we're almost done, those of you that don't know, if you see in front of me, his name's in white. That's somebody that should be near and dear to your community hearts. Who's gone and not replaced. Right. Speaks German. <laughs> Maybe help narrow it down for you. I'm not going to go and spell it out, but... There you his go. name sounds like pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a mathematical number. I think he has like a doctorate degree in chemistry. He does. Little known fact about our good friend, Pi Schober. You know, one of the guys <laughs> that works at MMORPG.com, and it, actually last week was his last week, um, he just got his PhD last week as well. Um, Big congratulations to him. That's yeah, nice so it's feet. like, yeah, what do you do? Uh, I do journalism for an yeah. internet website. Oh, Post -gra so you're, you're postgraduate work in Dark Age of Camelot. Yeah. I'm a blogger. Oh, okay. I got a PhD. <laughs> okay. He actually got a job as a community manager on a different game. Really? Yeah. Is he going to post as doctor or whatever? I, I, I Honestly, you, that, you, you, you can't not. not do that. You can't get a doctorate and not. Uh, yeah, that's... I think that's like 87% of the reason to get a doctorate, isn't it? Yeah. He, uh, he should definitely... I, I refer to him as the doctor now. Uh, that's well you should, because he's earned that, Rob. Look, Kai? Dr. Kai? I'm actually uh, the guy I'm talking about. His name is uh, Sam Porfazana, so I don't know if you ever dealt with him. But uh, he, have not. I have not. It does sound familiar. He works for PWE now. Hmm. For their little game called Neverwinter. That's what he's doing. That's how cutthroat it is getting into community management these days, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. You need a PhD. <laughs> Get in the door. What? Graduated college? Pfft, any loser can graduate college these days. <laughs> you need an unedited dissertation yep. that passes peer review. You need to be ten tenured at MIT for a while. Yeah. That's if you want to be a game designer. A GED will work for for production, though. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You can give him the answer, Rob. What's that? Somebody's asking in chat how many times you've died. <laughs> I don't, uh, what is the slash name? Sla slash stat. Okay. My total RP, 1991. RP earned from kills, 1991. Kills that have earned RP, 87. Death blows, 1. Deaths, 14. All right, HP so. healed, 0. Resurrections performed, none. All right, Humpy 33. Rob RPs gets his per gold kill, 2289. Hey, it's Mulvick. Yeah. I don't die, I just randomly wander around until I fall over drunk. I blame Jenny. Look at this. I think we're owning the battlefield. There's your golf clap. He promised it and he delivered. <laughs> You're a man of your word, Humpy. I appreciate you. I'm a terrible reaver because I don't heal. <laughs> Are you? I just what I just got told. I'm sure it was sarcasm that's finest. There, look, I think I might have another killing blow. Hey, Ninja, he stole my KB. KB stellar. People don't do that in this game, do they? Uh, no. Yeah, no. Alright, I think we've wiped him off the battlefield. It's guard time. Guard time? Guard time. And that is the game time card, not the card that has been kind enough to, uh, along with uh, Edder, to assemble the questions that we have answered tonight. Uh, for our next, for Rob's next segment um, on March 13th, if you uh, want to contribute some some questions, uh, jump onto postcount.com uh, in the week or so leading up to the broadcast. Uh, Card or editor generally has a thread going, which uh, asks you for questions to submit to us. And he compiles them and he gives them to Rob and Rob asks me and it's it's all very civilized. Postcount.net, post count that's correct. Okay, I got, I got a question for some of this in my group. They keep saying they can't type on the site because they don't have a Facebook account. You don't need a Facebook account to type on MMORPG.com, so that's what I'm confused about their question. Um, From Blood Red Skies. This is Dark Age of Camelot. Yes, the Dark only Age MMO Camelot. that you really ever need to worry about or consider. Okay. If you don't like postcount.net, you're always welcome to go to mmorpg.com and then go to the Dark Age of Camelot forums and post them as well because I will make sure that I collect them from there. Just throwing it out there. Um, also, in Wayback Wednesday news next week, I will be with the Turbine team and we will be doing Asheron's Call. So. Oh. Yeah. Feel more than welcome to come hang out for that one if you want to. I'm in the... Oh. We're actually at the keep, keep. Now we decide to come here. This is the wrong keep. Other keep. <laughs> There's no cards here to kill us. Where are we going? I say we give it to the Hibernians because we actually rolled them earlier. So let's go throw ourselves on their uh, their guards. Follow me. So be it. Buff me. I'm running. I'm not really running. Actually, I'm kind of jogging. Sprint is up. Aurelio, uh, we can talk about speed warp killing um, on threads or through feedback if you have if you have a perspective on speed warps and have a effect RVR in either a positive or negative way, then let us know. There it is. There's the goal. <laughs> you want a slayer a slayer of speed warp title? 
And as, as I'm running there, I'll give out the last card. Syvus, S-Y-V-U-S, congratulations. The Lurkeen just waved to me. Hi, Lurkeen. I'm dead. <laughs> Okay, so... Hey, card made it to the front door. Oh, he's shield slamming people. Hey, <laughs> uh, Ryo Wolf, Shiza, and Rekos 101, you won the Bible. the front door as well. You won. You six won time cards, and I will email them to you through Twitch later this weekend. And then, remember to go to last week's write-up, or last episode's write-up, and we will... Uh, Pick randomly a winner on Friday and send a time card out there. And one other thing, if you're still around, I'm actually going to give away this shirt. Uh, but you have to look for details on how to win that on Twitter, and I will post a link to my Twitter account. Is that incentivizing? Yes, exactly. Incentivizing to follow my social media. Make me feel special. And I do actually, I'm pretty active on there. I'm gonna give people. you an I'm gonna give you an honorary doctorate on Twitter. Are you? Yeah. Sweet. You actually use Twitter? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, not personally. Uh, you know who doesn't use Twitter either? Who's that? Your community manager. <laughs> That's not true. We post on Twitter. It might as well be. <laughs> I'm trying to remember his name. I know it starts with a T. Tim. Tim. Yeah, Tim Chapel. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was scrolling on my Skype as a poke at Tim. I think uh, uh, Tim's a great. I've been working with him for a lot of years, and um, you know he's he takes care of a lot of products right now, and that's uh, it's, it's no small feat considering how many uh, you know hungry communities we have. Um, but if uh, if you'd like to see more of a you know a Twitter presence, if anyone would you know let us know. We generally try to update anything we post in the Herald goes up to Twitter and Facebook. Um, and it does. You guys do a good job of that. Well, the, the last you know the last month, and we talked about this earlier. The last month or so has been you know a, a pretty stern focus on uh, on the server the server migration maintenance. Yeah. And, what other, uh, what games did that? Was it just DAOC or did Warhammer and uh, UO go over to the Amazon servers as well? Sure. Okay. Um, I can really only speak for Dark Age of Camelot. That's fine. In that regard. Um, but uh, I'm not sure what what qualifies as way back for you. Do you have like a specific number in mind? Is it an MMO that's older than n years old? What's that? I'm asking you. What's the formula by you which about five? Uh, five. Okay, mm -hmm. so Warhammer doesn't quite make it yet. No, they can't. I've actually I asked Tim. Tim said they're busy. He'd get back to me. Well, that's not the right answer. That, I'm gonna yell at Tim for saying that. Talk to Tim. No, he's. he's he wanted to do it later on down the line. So I, I think I, we're looking at them for like April sure. or something. Sure. But actually, I did ask them. And I've done Ultima Online once before. I need to do Ultima yeah. Online again. And uh, But there we go. Covering all your properties. You know what you need? What do we need? A new... Uh, oh, yeah? yeah. So you're going to say Dark Age of Camelot too? No. I wasn't going to say <laughs> that. I know that you're not a fan, you're not a fan of that. I've never said that. I just said... Uh, I think you made that abundantly clear that you would have preferred just to continue to go along with Dark Age Camelot the way it is. Well, not the I, way it is, I but think there's life left in this game. I didn't you. say there's not. If there wasn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do these. I'd like, you'd like email me like, hey, what's going on? I'd be like, ah... You know, whether or not a Dark Age 2 gets made doesn't necessarily fall within my purview. You know, we had uh, we had Jeff Hickman on the show for the 11th anniversary, if you remember. Yes. Uh, Jeff Hickman was the... One of the original members, launch members, uh, mm -hmm. now working on Star Wars: uh, The Old Republic. Yeah, he's in Bioware now. Yep, and um, not part of Mythic. Uh, Dr. Hickman. Is he doctor, a doctor? doctor too. No, but he should <laughs> be. Um, you know, he he talked about like an, an absolute kind of uh, fascination slash great enthusiasm for. The, con the, the concept of making a sequel to this game, so um, we're absolutely not discounting it. I'm just saying that, you know, for right now, 
uh, I'm not quite ready to stop playing Dayhawk. I guess we don't have to, but um, I, like I get, like I said, I, I still think there are so far to go in this game. You know, we can be take our cues from Ultima Online and make it to 15 years. Then, um, you know, be quite happy about that. And I think you can. You only got what three more years? Yep. There you go. Three and a half, almost there. There, thereabouts. Right. Well, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out with us. Again, we will be in Cathal Valley uh, next time, which will be March 13th, the second Wednesday of the month, for those that are keeping track out there. I'm going to be uh, so me. Hey, John, you're going to be joining us for the March 13th broadcast, aren't you? Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. He we might actually even get him to play in that one. He didn't do a lot of talking this time. There's no reason he couldn't play. Yeah, my internet magically, miraculously didn't cut out. That's why I wasn't going to volunteer to play. <laughs> it's all right. So uh, thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out. Remember to go to check out that thread and enter for your chance to win a 30-day time card. Also, uh, check me out on Twitter, and I will send you real details on how you can win that Dark Age Camelot t-shirt, which you can't buy apparently anymore, so kind of have tempted not even to give it out to keep it for myself now. I'll give you another one. All right. There we go. Replace it. See how this works. And I had school. I appreciate now it. I'm incentivizing you. You're incentivizing <laughs> me. And um, as always, great time. Thanks for coming and spinning out and talking to us. It's a long Thank you, job. Bob, for giving us the forum and uh, for to all the players. We really appreciate the, the questions and the investment. And uh, thank you. So much. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, players. And if you uh, if you didn't get to see the beginning of it, this just for FYI, this goes up on our YouTube channel. Uh, I'll as soon as we kill the stream, I'll upload it. And you can also find a recap of like the questions and answers uh, on our website next Wednesday. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention that that Carrie said that you know she wanted to join us, but she's under the weather right now. So um, Carrie, we hope you feel better, and um, and hopefully next time you can. You can join us because we miss you here. Yes, Carrie. We know you're up to stuff. You were always the one to tell me to stop talking when I was talking too much. And now I'm running wild, so. It's okay. Stop talking too well. <laughs> Thank you, John. At least you actually let me late. ask you the questions this time. <laughs> There's like one episode where he just asked himself the questions and then answered them, too. But we hadn't agreed <laughs> on a format, so I'm not taking <laughs> responsibility for that. All right. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Good night, guys.